Hello and welcome back to Chat the Brain with Dr. Ghislaine. I'm Dr. Christine Ghislaine, board certified clinical neuropsychologist. In today's video, I am doing a little bit of an update from a video I did now a few years back, um, talking a little bit about what to expect when you are told that you need to go in for a neuropsychological evaluation. So I know that there are many providers and pediatricians and um, internal medicine doctors and other folks who recommend neuropsychological evaluations. And I feel like even though my prior uh, video talked a little bit about what to expect in that process that an update is probably necessary at this point just to talk through what my personal process is as compared to perhaps someone else. Um, I will give the caveat that just because I do it one way doesn't necessarily mean every neuropsychologist is going to do it in the exact same way, but I'm glad to give you a sense of what I do, the process and procedures that I tend to go through, um, just so that you can feel as comfortable as possible when going for a neuropsychological evaluation. So. In my practice, it is, I consider this a three-part process. No matter what age or stage you are in, if you are having a neuropsychological evaluation, you are going through three stages with me. The first stage is an intake interview, and basically what that means is a time where we sit down, we go over your background history. I want to know about your family history. I want to know about your medical history, social history, um, your educational or work histories, you know, all of the information about, uh, for young children, birth and delivery, any concerns during pregnancy uh, that the mother experienced. Um, you know, any concerns for developmental milestones? Did we meet those things on time? So really gathering uh, background history as well as a sense of what are the major concerns? What are the reasons that you're seeking out this evaluation? And most importantly, I think, what questions are you looking for me to answer? Um, certainly in these evaluations, I get questions such as, does my child have autism? or questions such as, is this a learning disability or ADHD or both or neither? Um, or for adults, is this normal aging or is this a dementia? Um, so these are questions that I want to make sure I'm aware of, that that is what you are looking for. And certainly my um, evaluation process is going to look at all of those things and more. So the intake interview right now is uh, over HIPAA Secure Video Conference, so I'm able to do that over video. This helps for busy parents who need to be in the home space. They can still be home and not worry about coming to an office space, driving here, parking, all of that, so we can do that over video. I also tend to find this is really helpful because multiple people can be on the phone. If it's a parent or loved one that's coming in for the evaluation, if uh, adult children are in multiple places, they can join that video and are able to um, everyone provide their unique input. So that's part one. Part two is the full day of testing and I will say part one is usually a day or two before uh, part two and part two is that full day of testing and that is where I am looking at everything that the brain does. So things like speed of processing, attention, concentration, motivation, um, executive functioning, so planning, organizing, um, shifting, those types of things. Um, there's also memory, there is academics or, um, you know, independence with daily skills, visuospatial functioning, language, um, you name it, fine motor skills, visual motor skills, social emotional personality. So if the brain does it, I am going to look at it in a developmentally appropriate way uh, across all of these domains. And so folks come to my office pretty much for a full day. Uh, young children are usually done by lunchtime, older adults, teenagers, it's usually mid to late afternoon, and we are working together. I don't use graduate students, I don't use testing technicians at this point, so I am in that room with you doing this testing and getting to know not only those scores at the end, um, because those are certainly important, but also what is the process? How are you responding when I ask you to do different things? And that qualitative information along with the quantitative, or those numbers at the end, data really gives me a good sense of what's going on. And that's part two. Part three is the feedback session and the report. So I, after you leave, I go ahead and score all of the um, testing that we did. I write up a report that summarizes the background history, summarizes what I observe of you in the room uh, during the testing day, summarizes all the testing and how you perform compared to other individuals your age. 
and um, make any diagnoses I feel are appropriate. Certainly those will go into the report at that time, as well as to make recommendations for home, school, or vocational, or work, um, and community-based support. So how can we get you to your best? How can I support you based on your strengths? What can we use those strengths um, you know, in order to boost those areas of difficulty. And I always say to clients, I don't go away after the uh, testing session. So we will go over things in the feedback. We will go over that report in the feedback session, which again is part three. Um, but then if there's questions or, you know, if there are things that come up a week or two later, I'm always happy to have conversations or problem solve with families. I don't go away just because the report is issued to the family. Um, you know, and people ask, okay, so how often do I have to do this? In young children, I often see kids once a year um, just because I tend to find there's so much rapid development happening um, for school age children or teens or adults. It might be something where I only see them um, once every two to three years to update, let's say, an IEP or an individualized education program at school. Um, older adults and adults, it may only be one time just to kind of get a sense of where folks are and um, you know, provide some support if it's an adult ADHD diagnosis, for example, they might not necessarily come to see me multiple times. So I am hopeful that this kind of gives you a sense of the process. Um, you know, it's not something where you're in a dark room and you're staring at a screen for six hours on end, nothing like that. These tasks are paper and pencil or tasks on a computer or an iPad. And, um, you know, really it's back and forth. It's conversational. It's um, you know, my goal is really to make it as comfortable of a process as possible. So uh, with all of that information in mind, that is what's typically done for a comprehensive neuropsychological evaluation. Other folks, as I said, might not do it the same way, but hopefully that gives you a sense of what a um, evaluation could look like. And I hope it empowers you with the opportunity to ask questions of the neuropsychologist that you are working with in terms of their expectations, how they do testing, etc. The last piece I will touch upon is sometimes I get the question of, well, a full day is a really long time to be doing things. Can we break it up into multiple days? And the only thing that I will say to that is there are lots of schools of thought. For me personally, because I'm in the room working with the person who is having the testing done, I do book a full day testing. I want to see folks in the morning. I want to see folks in the afternoon. I want to see what two o'clock looks like. Um, you know, for an adult who might have a two o'clock slump, for example. I do think, you know, a, a kid's full-time job is to go to school. School is typically not a half a day. And so I want to see that stamina across the day. That being said, if there is a concern and I don't feel like I'm getting their best effort or I do feel like we're not getting what we need to get or we hit a wall, you know, I'm flexible enough to then be able to schedule another day to finish testing up. So that is one question that I get a lot and I think is a big point of variability across neuropsychologists. So I'm hopeful that, you know, my rationale helps you understand why I do it this way, whereas someone else might do it another way. So uh, if you find these videos helpful, please do like and subscribe. It is always wonderful to hear your comments down below. So please do comment or ask questions. I'm uh, hopeful to answer as many of them as I possibly can. And thank you so much for checking me out. I wish you well on your journey.